shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, Andy from Big Mac's Workshop and um, Painting Studio, and as you can see, I'm doing a Reva Titan refurbishment here, um, using bits from uh, various different bits boxes, what I've pillaged and raided. I'm also using some 3D printed weaponry. Uh, the weaponry are uh, sonic uh, blasters, um, which were designed for the Warlord Titan, uh, but I um, refitted it to uh, fit my Reva Titan. Not totally sure on the heritage of this Reva. I believe it's armor cast. I could be wrong. Uh, it was second hand, it was in a bit of a sorry state when I got it. Um, mold lines everywhere, so clean up as best I can. Also, uh, the paintwork weren't great. It did have some gems along uh, some of the areas where I had skulls. I removed all that lot and got rid of all the imperial iconography uh, so I could paint it up as a nice chaos piece. Now, as you can see, I've uh, adapted the uh, joint for the uh, weapon because it was designed for a warlord um, to fit my reaver as best as possible. So, um, it is so I'm going to be doing a, t telling you about what I've done, also um, uh, how I've done it. But it's not a tutorial; it's more of a hobby uh, vlog. Uh, as you can see, though, I'm getting uh, the airbrush. I do apologise; it's all airbrush work for the most part. Uh, there was no way in uh, earth I was painting this by hand. So I've started off with a um, light coat of light rust uh, all over the place. Uh, get it all over it. Um, this is going to be a lot of chipping involved, a lot of. Um, uh, sort of effect work on this because I'm not doing it. I'm not going over the top with a paint job. I wanted something that's nice, smart, but not over the top. I wanted to keep it very simple. Doing exactly the same thing on the um, uh, weaponry. Uh, the weaponry was uh, printed out by um, my father-in-law. Uh, I'll drop a link in the description if you're interested. Uh, he's an amateur, um, amateur uh, 3D printer, so um, he does some really nice stuff for anything you fancy. If you've in, or got any interest in having anything printed out. So once the uh, light rust has gone down, I'm going back over it with yellowish rust, uh, just in various different spe uh, spots, and um, getting uh, a bit of vari colour variation for where the chips are going to be underneath. Once the paint's gone down, I'm using um, put a, bit, a couple of layers of varnish on it just to protect the paint, and now I'm using uh, AK Interactive's heavy chipping fluid. This is going all over the place, on all the armor panels, anything that's going to uh, take battle damage and rust up a bit. Uh, as you can see, it goes on uh, really weird, um, but it does help you to be able to see it. And you get a nice thick coat on there, uh, and that'll protect, um, well, that'll uh, allow you to chip through it. Once it's dried, which takes a little while, um, going over the top with Filthy Brown, uh, which is a Vallejo color. Uh, again, I apologize for the um, focus, it's a little bit out at times. Um, painting something this large was very difficult to get in focus uh, using our uh, fairly basic equipment. Now, filthy brown I do use all the time for any of my yellows. Uh, it's a nice rich yellow uh, colour that goes over everything really nicely. So you get a nice solid colour uh, base so you can take it up and down from there. As we've always said, burnt umber makes everything better. And um, uh, never truer a word said uh, when, uh, when it comes to working with yellow. Burnt Umber really does uh, wonders to make the um, the yellow shadowed. Um, it really uh, really works well with the filthy brown and any other yellows really. Uh, so I've, I'm going through around all the le uh, all the um, armor engravements and any of the recessed detail with the burnt umber just to uh, add some depth into it. I'm back over the top to tidy it all up with the filthy brown, leaving some of the burnt umber showing. It's a nice light coat, um, so. Um, I'm not trying to go for a full coverage, uh, just to, just there to tone down the burnt umber where it doesn't need to be, and just to bring the yellow back out. And now I'm using Phoenix Flames, which is an army painter colour. And as you can see, really vibrant. It's about on the level with uh, GW's Flash Gets Yellow. Uh, nice vibrant colour, so I, um, I can really play around making it look gritty and dirty while that's still a that solid yellow base is underneath. And I'm just going to um, just play around um, with that um, really vibrant colour just to give it something to uh, really stand out. If you notice, uh, there are skeletons and things attached to it. Again, completely my own work. Uh, again, bits from uh, bits boxes and that. I wanted to tie it into my Night Lord army. Uh, so for having skeletons and sarcophaguses and all that kind of good stuff, just to make it a little bit more interesting, a bit more chaosy. So on the trim, it is. Vallejo's hammered copper, um, and it's just going all over the trim, 
Uh, I'm using a, a large brush. If I'd have uh, had a bigger one, I'd probably use that. Uh, this took forever. Uh, as you can imagine, it's uh, there's a hell of a lot of this stuff on a on a Titan. Um, so yeah, it took a long time to get a decent coverage of the uh, hammer copper. And on all the internal um, mechanisms, that's just a flat uh, gunmetal silver. Uh, the equivalent to a lead belcher. So a bit of freehand now, because uh, this is Legio Furians, also known as the Tiger's Eyes. And one of their um, trademarks is flames. Uh, so this is re uh, repeated all over the um, uh, Titan at various stages. You've seen me use this sort of uh, graffiti style flames before. Uh, did it on a Salamander's uh, model. I've also used it on the uh, Eldar Farseer we did a video on. It works really nicely. You get a nice uh, uh, imperfect flame. and It works. It just makes it look a bit more interesting. It's so easy to do it as well. Just keep um, working with curves and uh, you get some really nice interesting uh, flame shapes. Um, and it looks it looks right um, without being particularly good at having to draw the fire because drawing fire is quite tricky. So once the uh, fire and all the uh, any kind of detail work I wanted to do um, is on, I've uh, moistened my brush. Uh, this, as you can see, is a very short bristled stu uh, stubby brush, and um, moistening the um, paintwork as well. And I'm just going to stab. I'm just stabbing away at it with the uh, brush and. Dabbing, dabbing it off with a, a wet wipe or a bit of tissue uh, to scratch off the armour um, and really get rid of that tidy, neat look. Uh, I wanted it battered and bruised. This is 10,000 years old. It's been at war for 10,000 years in the warp. It wants to be scruffy and messy and looking really different, really interested. And that's, uh, that's uh, where we're at now. So now it's um, doing the uh, trim work again. Uh, yeah, I'm dry brushing. Um, this is uh, there was no way in the world I was going to proper highlight this up. It was gonna, it would have taken absolutely ages. So I'm using for the uh, trim uh, old copper by Scale Seventy Five. Uh, as you can see, I've got a nice soft dry, dry brush, uh, one we made um, from our collection of old brushes else um, knocking around the studio. And I'm going around all the edges. This is done exactly the same everywhere. Um, really uh, brightening up that um, brightening up that trim. As you can see, I've not managed to uh, completely um, clean up all the uh, flaws in the um, mold, with mold lines and such, um, which is a shame. But it was very difficult to get the. Uh, Get some of the mold lines off, even with a Dremel, it took it took a lot of effort just to get them down to that level. After the uh, old copper, it's amber alchemy. Um, getting that uh, again, highlighting all those uh, nice, um, what uh, worn edges and around all the uh, nuts and bolts. And it is the wash is a 50 50 mix of non oil and Reetland uh, flesh shade gloss. Uh, it's really thin down, so I can go down a couple of times. Uh, doesn't as it doesn't um, pull up so much. And this uh, is going to add more depth to the um, detail work. The piping, I decided I wanted something a little bit brighter, a little bit more colourful. Um, so I went for purple, a nice royal colour. Um, it also uh, really separated the uh, cabling from any of the armour plating, and uh, I just wanted something a little bit different, just a little bit more uh, colourful. Uh, otherwise this would have been a quite a, a dull colour scheme. Now, as you can see, there's a dirty great big mole line there. Uh, didn't see that one before, I uh, just noticed it on camera. Yeah, not happy about that one. Yeah, so I've got a dead body on the, uh, uh, on the, arm on the armour, uh, along with the skeleton. And uh, as, as you see, there's cabling going into the dead body. He's uh, been based up with um, Cadian Flesh Tone, and the, the skeleton is based in Walnut, uh, which is a scale 75. And uh, yeah, as you can see, just getting a nice, um, crisp, even base over that model. Now, 
I'm not going to go over the top with the um, these extraneous details because it's going to be covered in grease and such as well. But I do need them base colours in there and with some highlights because it does really make a difference, um, even if you are covering them with um, street and grimes and such. Uh, the nuts and bolts, they are black metal. And that's uh, just that one colour. I'm also going over the same uh, on the chains while holding the uh, body um, of one of the loyalist uh, pilots of the vehicle uh, before it went rogue. So we're keeping it alive, it's getting highlighted up after a real and flesh shade wash. Again with um, Cadian and then going over the top with uh, Pallid Witch Flesh. Working on the skeleton, there's also loads of skulls all over the um, base around the lower regions of the uh, model and also some kind of a uh, bit of um, trophy rack sort of things going on. Uh, there was a giant two in its skull um, as a belt buckle um, which did cover a, a, a massive gem section. I've also put some on around the um, head and that. So we're highlighting up the uh, skulls. Uh, this is um, a mix of walnut and mornfang and then we've added uh, Iroko into it from scale 75. As you can see we're starting to get a real vibrant um, bright skeleton structure on there. Um, this was taken from the um, ghostly undead from a bits box from uh, the uh, I can't remember what they're called uh, but they look like giant ghosts and such. There's a lot of that sort of stuff knocking about on the uh, model. Of course, uh, I've got a friend who's um, a vampire counts player so he's got loads of that sort of stuff. I've added some white into the uh, royal purple uh, just to add a, a couple of highlights. Again, I'm not going over the top on the um, royal purple highlights uh, because there's no real need. Because of this, this is the reason why I'm not going to go going over the top. This is streak and grime. Uh, normally it's uh, applied by hand, but this was on a Titan. So uh, I thinned it down a little bit. Um, the airbrush still struggled, but I uh, covered the entire thing in streak and grime. Once it dries, which takes ages, uh, you get some uh, white spirit or uh, terps or ice grade finner, that sort of thing. Uh, a stubby brush is a nice scratchy one which I use for a lot of my um, streaking, uh, streaking grime effects and a bit of tissue and I'm just starting to soften up the uh, streaking grime and rub some away and what this does is get you a really uneven, street, nasty, dirty colour. Uh, interestingly, uh, because of the free, way the 3D printing has gone, there's small uh, layers so it really, sit, it really works well with the uh, 3D printed um, sections as well. Uh, the blue is uh, navy blue, uh, going up with up to uh, Mediterranean blue, both scale 75. Again, doing highlights uh, and everything through the airbrush. Uh, I wanted it to look really nice and glowy. Uh, I've added uh, some uh, white into the navy blue. As you can see, it's starting to uh, bring it up nicely. Uh, so you've got that really cool sort of power field looking thing. Uh, really didn't know how to paint up a... Uh, uh, sonic weapon so I just sort of went with something vaguely plasmary because I'm not quite sure uh, how it really worked to be honest as um, yeah sonic weaponry uh, I never tried it so yeah added some more white and really made it look and glow because it's got these weird cool like uh, under vents and such and uh, then obviously going through the um, through the main section as well uh, where the uh, energy coils are. So there we have it. Uh, loads of skulls and uh, random detail sections everywhere. I've got a um, sarcophagus from the back of the um, Vampire Counts. Oh, I forget what it's called. The, um, the coffin thing. And that's representing the, um, rem uh, the still alive remains of the uh, Loyalist Princeps. So there we go. Uh, loads of extra details, loads of skulls as you can see around the base and uh, also into its um, hips and around its head. Uh, just to uh, add a bit more chaos -y sort of uh, feel to it. And uh, yeah, so always uh, we have some thank yous to make. So first thank you I'm going to have to uh, give out to 3D Printing Wizard. Uh, check him out on Facebook. He's the guy who uh, made uh, the free weapon systems I've got. As always, got huge thank yous uh, to make uh, for the old boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, D. Wack, Mark, Dave and Tom. You're our Patreon guys. Um, without you, we wouldn't be able to do any of this either. 
so you keep the lights on. If you want to join us on Patreon, check us out, um, where you get loads of benefits and early access to all our videos as well. Secondly, I'd also like to um, thank the outposts, which are uh, our affiliate link. Uh, check them out in the description, uh, where you get uh, 15 to 20% off all your um, hobby needs and equipment. Uh, we also get 5% store credit at no cost to you, so that helps us out. It really allows us um, to get extra stuff uh, really cheap to uh, produce more content for you. So if you like this sort of thing, I know this is a little bit different, a bit, um, this is not really a tutorial, just something uh, what I uh, wanted to try and put together, because uh, I do like to uh, throw some different stuff together as well. Uh, we've got some other tutorials coming up, and we've got loads of tutorials already on. So thank you guys for watching, hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends, it really does help us out, and we shall catch you in the next one guys. Take care, and see you soon.